Hi, everybody, and welcome back to yet another cracking edition of the Matt Brown Show. This is the Secrets of Fail series where we're talking to founders and entrepreneurs all about their epic business failures and everything they learned in the process of, you know, making mistakes and, and that kind of stuff. And with us on the line today uh, is the CEO of Excel Events, uh, and his name is none other than Jonathan Kazarian. Jonathan, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Cool, dude. So uh, you know what's going to happen, right? So let's start with the elevator pitch. What are you guys up to there at Excel Events? Yeah, so we're an event management platform. The premise behind Excel Events is that we're everything you need to effortlessly plan, execute, and analyze all of your events at any scale, be it in person or virtual. Mm -hmm. And uh, who is, who's your customer typically? Are they small, medium, large, everybody in between? Yeah, you name it. Uh, we've got everything from... You know, presidential candidates to Zapier to, you know, Series B companies. So All right. we cover the spectrum. Sweet, brother. Well, look, let's get on to the sweet. Uh, sweet? <laughs> That's a fail. Meat and potatoes. You can have sweet potatoes today, okay? <laughs> uh, but what is your story of fail for our audience around the world today? Yeah, so uh, when I started this business, we were fully bootstrapped. And, you know, we're in the event space. We were so bootstrapped that we were basically funding ourselves a month forward based on the revenue that was coming in in a given month. And being in the event space at the time, that revenue was coming from ticket sales. Well, that was all good and well until March 2020 came around. And in the course of about two weeks, we went from profitable to actually having negative cash flow because of all of the refunds and the ticket sales. We, we basically ran out of money to the point that we couldn't even continue to offer the refunds on tickets that had been sold on our platform. And I'd been building the platform for five years at this point. Everything that I had been building for, building towards, evaporated overnight. Swack. Uh, and so what did that whole experience teach you? <laughs> That's going to be a good one. I'm still a huge advocate for bootstrapping, but... Uh, you can only push the margin so far, right? You have to have the reserves. You have to be able to cover payroll out a couple of months. And, uh, you know, we ended up figuring it out and we pushed through and we ended up 10 xing our revenue that year, but it was not a fun two months. No, I'm sure. So how did you actually come out of that hole? Did you raise money in the end or what did you do? Yeah. So <laughs> we were very small at the time. I convinced my dad to invest 75 K out of his retirement basically at the bottom of the market in, in, I guess, April of 2020. And uh, we used that to cover ourselves for about six weeks while we pivoted to virtual events. And at that point, we started pre-selling based off of like Figma slides, a product that we didn't have yet. But we used that revenue to push forward and get our product, at least a MVP of it, built and launched so that we could keep the business moving forward. Mm, that's amazing. So... <laughs> You could get into the Matt Brown show time machine and kind of, you know, have the luxury of no need <laughs> doing things differently. What would you do differently and why? Well, what I would have done differently back then is after that point, realizing the opportunity ahead of us, which, you know, hindsight's 2020, I would have went out and raised more money because the opportunity was so vast. That said, again, I'm still a huge advocate for bootstrapping. And we did raise a little bit of money since then, um, but I would just be a little bit more conservative if you are a bootstrap business about giving yourself that margin. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one, right? Because you're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place is raising money and then there's the expectation of paying that back. And then the alternative is well doing the bootstrapping story, which requires time, patience and a lot of hard work, right? So there's no, there's no, it's kind of like, there's no silver bullet, there's just lead bullets. So you got to keep shooting. Yeah. The, the one saving grace is that we didn't raise debt and that was something we had considered at the time. But fortunately we didn't and fortunately we didn't have debt to service. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So Jonathan, what's your advice for CEOs in terms of the importance of failure or failing in business success? Oh, it makes the upside all the more fun, right? <laughs> it's the struggle that, the struggle that makes the whole thing worth it. Uh, don't give up, right? We could have closed doors, could have closed shop at that point and said, you know what, this isn't going to work out, but we didn't. Uh, had a lot that we had, you know, my time, years of my life invested behind this. And I just, I wasn't willing to give up. We knew the opportunity in front of us and just keep on pushing through, right? You know, it's, 
majority of companies that fail, it's because somebody gave up. Mm -hmm. Have you, were you tempted to quit at any point? Were you like, fuck this, this is just like, you know, we're just, it's too much. No, kind of, but no, yeah. like it was one of those things where it was like, well, what else? Uh, like, I like this. I love this. What else am I going to do? No, like, I'm just, I'm not going to quit. I'm just going to like, it'll kill me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. If, uh, startups don't die, founders quit, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, speaking of, uh, books and, uh, tools and resources and things like that, are there books that you recommend or that have inspired you to persevere or anything that's helped you grow your business? I wouldn't say that there's a book that's helped to uh, help me push through all of that. I think that you just, you either have the self-motivation or you don't. And uh, I grew up with ADD and dyslexia. Nothing was ever easy. So this was just kind of one more of those situations. It's also the reason I don't read very many books. <laughs> uh, that's classic. Uh, what about podcasts and other tools, resources, anything like that? Love podcasts. Yeah. Yeah, love podcasts. I'd probably listen to every episode of Staster. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's my go-to. Yeah. You know, the companies yeah. that are maybe a step ahead of us. Some of them are right where we are today. And there's just so much that you can learn hearing the struggles that others have been through. Um, people who have already faced the problems that you're facing. I mean, the same reason that you're, you're hosting this show. And for me, that's a better way to absorb the content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, thank you for persevering, dude. Um, obviously, uh, you guys have reached a nice level of scale now. So congrats, Matt, on all your success and uh, yeah, wishing Appreciate you that. guys all the very best in the future. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.